Hello, it's Miss Ellis, and I'm here with your story for this week. This week, we're going to be reading 10 rules you absolutely must not break if you want to survive the school bus. All right. Now, if you notice before we start reading this story, there is an award sticker on here. So this is an award because it won the Texas Blue Bonnet Award, and it's got the um, sticker right here on the side. So in third grade, we do have Blue Bonnet books. Blue Bonnet books are books that have been chosen in Texas. There are 20 choices. Uh, children from third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade get to read them and then vote, and then the author wins an award. Parents don't vote, teachers, principals, only kids, and not even librarians to get the award. So anyway, this one won, so it's a really good story because it was voted on by kids. Here we go. This is written by John Granitz. Now this story, Kyle is the little boy in the story, this is him, and he is really dreading the first day of school because he has to ride the school bus. So his brother, James, gives him some rules to help him survive. Let's see what happens. 10 rules you absolutely must not break if you want to survive the school bus. And here's James, and he's watching his favorite TV show, and his brother is telling him it's time to go. There's his backpack. Here we go. And there's the neighborhood and the school bus. All right. It was the first day of school, and my brother James was walking me to the corner where the school bus stopped. I'd never taken the bus before, and to be honest, I was a little nervous. But James was a school bus expert, and he promised to help me out. Now, pay attention, Kyle, he said. Don't walk on people's lawns. They don't like it when you do that. I jumped to the middle of the sidewalk. And don't get to the bus stop too early. That's always a mistake. I gulped. What kind of a mistake? But don't get there late either or you'll get left behind. My stomach turned over. In one of the nature shows I watch on TV, a young Canada goose got left behind when the flock flew south for the winter. I think it froze to death. Too bad James wasn't taking the bus with me. Last year he rode the bus and mom and me, and mom walked me to school. And then we moved and now he gets to walk and I have to take the bus. James had told me all about riding the bus. He said if you weren't careful, you could get laughed at or yelled at. You could get pushed around or even pounded. Big kids would steal your lunch and your money and even your football card collection. Sometimes I wondered if he was exaggerating a little, but even if half the stories were true, I was in trouble. So what am I supposed to do? I asked him. Just think of what I do and try to act like me, James had said, and always, always follow my rules. He called them the 10 rules you absolutely must not break if you want to survive the school bus. I was going to follow every one of them I didn't want to get pounded. A couple of kids and their parents were already at the bus stop. There was a house with a fenced in yard in the corner and inside the yard there was a dog barking like crazy. I couldn't see him, but he sounded like an Arctic wolf that hadn't eaten all winter. The fence looked old and rotten. Better stay back, said James. That dog sounds nuts. No lie. A big kid said to my brother, I heard you ate a first grader last year. Everyone moved as far away from the fence as possible, even the grown-ups. But I had bigger things to worry about than some dumb old dog. I had to ride the school bus all alone, all by myself, surrounded by kids I didn't know. Suddenly, there it was, the school bus, charging right at me like a giant yellow rhinoceros. At the last second, it jerked to a stop and the door swung open. Man, what was that smell? Last year's barf? James waved and walked away. That's when the big kid pushed me aside, knocking my backpack to the ground. And by the time I'd picked up all my stuff, everyone else was already on the bus. I climbed on board. The driver was nasty looking. 
Hurry up, kid, she said. I don't have all day, you know. The first row of seats was empty, but I kept going because of rule number one, never sit in the first row. The second row was filled and the third row too. And there were kids of every size and shape and color on the bus. And every one of them was staring at me. I felt like a zebra at a lion party. The fourth row was filled, the fifth, the sixth. Oh no, every seat was taken except the last row, but I couldn't sit there because of rule two, never sit in the last row. I thought maybe I should go back to the first row and break rule one, but then I'd have to walk by everybody again and I'd break rule three, never ever make yourself stand out in any way. I'd been very careful to put on ordinary clothes that morning. I hadn't worn my moose antlers hat or my lucky bowling shirt. Even so, there I was, stopped dead in the middle of the aisle with everybody staring at me. I walked to the last row and I sat down. I had broken rule two and probably rule three because I didn't break rule one. I stared at my shoes. The day was not starting out very well. There was a kid sitting at the window next to me. I could see legs and feet, jeans and sneakers. Was it a boy or a girl? I didn't want to be rude, but I was curious. I decided to take a peek and immediately broke rule four. Never make eye contact. What are you looking at, dweeb? It was the big kid from my stop and he was glaring up at me. Up close, he was the size of a grizzly bear. He must have been in the sixth grade at least. Quickly, I looked away. My brother had told me that eye contact was very dangerous. If you looked at the kid wrong, he might lash out at you like a cornered animal. All of a sudden, the big kid's lunch bag fell off the seat. And without thinking about what James would do, I picked it up. That's when I remembered Rule five, never touch anyone else's stuff. Hey, what are you doing with my lunch? The big kid yelled. Nothing, I said, and I tossed it into his lap. It fell on the floor. I was just trying to help. Help yourselves to my Twinkies, you mean? No, honest, I just picked it up. Get out of this seat, he growled. You little kids are such a pain. James would never have gotten into this mess because he wouldn't have broken rule six. Never talk to big kids. Big kids on the bus are bad, my brother had explained. Never, ever talk to the big kid unless you're one yourself. And I wasn't. So far, the big kid had already yelled at me. Maybe he wasn't pounding me yet, but he might be planning to pound me later. I got up, I crossed the aisle, and I sat down. There was a girl in the other half of the seat. Don't pay any attention to him, she said. I saw the whole thing. You didn't try to take his lunch. Yeah, but I shouldn't have touched his stuff, I said. I guess I wasn't thinking, which only proved that I still wasn't thinking because I had just broken rule seven. Never talk to girls. James told me that girls were even worse than big kids and they were as mean as snakes. And they never stopped talking, and they hated sports. And if you were nice to them on the bus, they might want to sit with you at lunch. Actually, that part didn't sound too bad to me. I wouldn't mind having someone to sit with at lunch. But my brother, he was the expert. And it was true, the girl hadn't stopped talking since I'd sat down. But I sort of stopped listening because the barf smell was getting to me and I had to concentrate on not adding to it. Still, I snapped to attention when I heard her say, that guy's not so tough, you know. One time I saw him run away from a squirrel, but he likes to pick on younger kids. He's a big bully. Oh no. James had especially warned me to obey rule eight, never mess with the bully. Every bus has a bully, he would said. It could be the big kid or a little one, a boy or a girl. It doesn't matter. 
If you make the bully mad, your life will be miserable. I spent the rest of the bus ride imagining the bully beating me up all the way through grade school, high school, and college. Finally, the bus screeched to a stop and I escaped. I found my classroom, I met my teacher, and I sat down with the other kids. The rest of the day went okay, and one nice thing actually happened. At recess, I was watching a game of kickball and I saw the talking girl from the bus. She was captain of one of the teams and she was really good. Anyway, while she was waiting for her turn to kick, she came over and she talked to me and talked and talked. She told me that she took acting classes on Saturday and yellow was her favorite color. She knew a lot about chameleons because she had three of them. I was going to tell her about my ant farm, only she didn't leave any spaces for me to say anything. Of course, James never would have listened to a girl, but it wasn't that bad. In fact, the chameleon stuff was interesting. And she said I could be on her kickball team tomorrow. Finally, it was time to go home, but I couldn't find my bus. There were thousands of them. It was a herd of identical yellow rhinos. Which one was mine? Hey, new kid, over here. It was the talking girl hanging out of the bus window. Yes, I'd finally found the bus, or at least it had found me, and I hurried to get on because of rule nine. Never be the last one on the bus. The driver frowned at me. Sit down, kid, she said. You're the last one on board. I could see that my brother was right about this rule. There were no seats left except in the first row right next to the big kid bully. Uh, hi, I said weakly, sliding into the seat. I didn't look at him in the eye. Even so, I had managed to break rules one, three, six, eight, and nine in about 30 seconds. This must be a new world record. James would never approve, but I was too tired to care. Man, I hate the ride home on this bus. Yikes. The big kid bully was talking to me. Really? I said carefully. Yeah, I always get a bad seat like this one. He stared at me as if it was my fault. And I hate where the bus stops. Y you mean because of the dog? I said. The big kid bully grunted, <laughs> which I meant to mean yes. Uh, yeah, I said. What if it got loose? That would be real scary. He nodded. You'd think the bus driver could stop across the street, but no. H have you asked her? Are you nuts? There are rules you have to follow when you ride the bus. Tell me about it, I said. And I remembered the last one on my brother's list. Rule 10. Never, absolutely never, mess with the bus driver. I never mess with the bus driver, said the big kid bully. She's scarier than the dog on the corner. And he smiled an evil sort of smile. And then he went on, why don't you ask her? You're a little kid. She probably won't yell at you much. I thought it over. I'd already broken every other rule. I might as well go for 10 out of 10. Miss school bus driver lady, I said half standing to get her attention. Yeah, what? Sit down, kid, she squawked. No talking to the driver. But I wasn't gonna quit now. There, there's a scary dog on the corner by our stop, I said. Could you please drop us off on the other side of the street instead? Oh, is that all, she said. No sweat, kid, now sit down. And that was it, I sat down. The big kid bully looked impressed. Wow, good work, he said. And then he caught himself and frowned. Little kids get away with murder, he growled. Maybe that was true, but I still felt brave. I'd broken every single one of my brother's rules. Even so, I hadn't gotten pounded and I hadn't even barfed on the bus. I walked on people's lawns all the way home. James was waiting for me. 
He was so anxious to find out what had happened, he was jumping up and down like a spider monkey. How was the school bus? He said, where'd you sit? Did you get pounded? Who's the bully? Is the driver mean? You didn't talk to any girls, did you? Was it terrible? It was okay, I said. I think I'll be all right. And I learned something I never expected to learn. Oh yeah, he said, what's that? I grinned at him and said, rule 11, never, absolutely never, pay attention to your big brother's list of 10 rules you absolutely must not break if you want to survive the school bus. That's the end of our story. I thought it was funny because when you started a new school or a new place, there's all these sets of rules. And sometimes you kind of have to come up with your own rules to kind of make your way in the world. What worked for his brother didn't necessarily work for him. You still have to follow the school bus rules, but you don't have to follow your brother's rules. I'll see you next time.